to make a fast video about the Reason Rally. I can't be there, and um, I live far away in Cambridge, England. So I wanted to like do something to encourage rationality on YouTube. And it occurred to me that I'm reading this book. It's a book of essays by scientists, 150 plus. Uh, it's edited by John Brockman. And there are a number of essays that I found very, very intriguing reading. So I was going to propose that instead of doing your thinking for you, which so many YouTubers tend to do, for better or worse, in other words, they make a video, and they tell us all what we should be thinking about a certain thing. I want to just propose that you do the thinking and then share what you think. Um, I don't know if it'll work. It probably won't. There are three essays I'm going to focus on to begin with, and they all have the subject of bias. The first one is by Richard Dawkins, and it's about scientific experimentation and how easy it is to mislead people uh, into thinking totally irrational things unless they are able to understand how scientific experiments are done and why they're done and why bias is eliminated from them as much as humanly possible. So that will be the first essay. The second one I want to discuss is one of um, Gary Marcus's, and it's about humility. And the last part of the essay is very eloquent on bias. The last one is by, is this one by Douglas Rushkoff, Technologies Have Biases. As you're going through this, you should realize that these three essays about bias are only a few of many in the book that deal with the fact that for these thinkers and scientists, bias is one of the most critical things to overcome in order to improve your cognitive toolkit. That's the way the question is phrased. The question is, what scientific concept would improve everybody's cognitive toolkit? Bias comes up over and over again. I'm focusing on three essays. If you look at further reading in the low bar, you'll see that links to other essays in the book that also talk about bias. And by the way, these essays are available on Edge. Um, it's a great website. But they're also in the book, and I really enjoy having them in book form. So if possible, you should try to get the book if you can find it and you can afford it, or if your library has it. But really, bias and overcoming bias, and one of the real problems with overcoming bias is we none of us think that we have the biases. We think everybody else has biases, but that we don't. Um, so that's one of the first biases to overcome, the fact that you may think you have no biases. <laughs> so anyway, on to the essays. In the very brief essay, it's only about a page and a half, Dawkins begins by asking this question. Why do half of all Americans believe in ghosts, three quarters believe in angels, a third believe in astrology, three quarters believe in hell? Why do more than 40% of Americans think the universe began after the domestication of the dog? And his answer to that question is, I think, a very good one. It's about how we're not taught to think critically in schools, usually. His remedy for that, one of them, is to teach schools, people in schools, how to do double blind control experiments. And he talks about how they're done. You wouldn't even have to literally do them in schools, but you'd have to understand the theory of how they're done and why they eliminate bias. Again, it's a very short essay. And on the second page of the essay, he talks about specific ways, there are five of them, that understanding double-blind control experiments would help us uh, in very specific ways to think rationally. 
so it's very much worth your time. It's the first link in the low bar. The second essay is one by Gary Marcus and it's called Cognitive Humility. Um, it's something that I see a lot of people here, and I've been guilty of it myself, thinking arrogantly that you know a lot more than everybody else and trying to use your sense that you are so smart um, to tell other people what they should or should not think without inviting them to do their own thinking. And Gary Marcus does a great job of talking about these kinds of biases and what they lead to. And I'm going to read just one short thing. Overcoming this mental weakness known as confirmation bias is a lifelong struggle. Recognizing that we all suffer from it is an important first step. We can try to work around it, compensating for our inborn tendencies towards self-serving and biased recollection by disciplining ourselves to consider not just the data that might fit with our own beliefs, but also the data that might lead other people to have beliefs different from ours. Um, the whole essay is worth your time, and again, it's a little bit shorter than two pages. It won't take much of your time. It's the second link in the low bar. The third essay is the briefest. It's just a little over a page. It's by Douglas Rushkoff, Technologies Have Biases. It's worth reading, uh, third link in the low bar. As I said, it's very brief. I'm going to read a very short excerpt from it. Marshall McLuhan exhorted us to recognize that our media affect us beyond whatever content is being transmitted through them, and while his message was itself garbled by the media through which he expressed it, the medium is the what? Of course it's the message. It is true enough to be generalized to all technology. We are free to use any car we like to get to work. And this sense of choice blinds us to the fundamental bias of the automobile towards distance, commuting, suburbs, and consumption. Then he goes on and, and makes this point. If the concept that technologies have biases were to become common knowledge, we could implement them consciously and purposefully. If we don't bring this concept into general awareness, our technologies and their effects will continue to threaten and confound us. Again, it's very short. It's worth your time. And um, I'd like to know what you think. You know, I'm not trying to tell you what to think. I want to try to get you to think about the same kind of things I've been thinking about and tell me how, how you're thinking is the same or different. Um, there are no right answers here, but if you could just take a look at the three essays if you have the time, read them, they're very quick reading, and think about them. Um, they make three different points about bias, but they're all agreed that overcoming our personal biases, that is the first step to actually being able to think critically about what matters in the world. Thanks a lot for listening. You guys take care. Talk to you.